I'm Hermansky. First name, too embarrassing to even mention. <laughs> Classified info. <laughs> Someone is shooting. At us! Your partner could be in trouble. Oh, we're not going for a ride, are we? Officer! Officer, you've got to help us! They killed my partner! You think we can trust her, Marvin? No, I don't. This guy steals from dead people. He was desperate. This tall brunette, born with a silver spoon in her mouth, was Private Eye Raymond Dashiell Caulfield's first wife. This streetwise blonde and I have only two things in common. We were both married to the same man, and we both divorced him. We met for the first time at his funeral. Are you ready for this? He left us his mansion, mortgage to the hilt, and the Caulfield Detective Agency. And how do we manage? We call the cops a lot. about an auction anyway. You know, those guys are always hustlers. My father was an auctioneer once in San Jose till they ran him out of town. Well, this is a real auction with real bargains. Carol, some women go crazy over Iglesias, others Michael Jackson, but no, nope, not you. It's bargains. Yes. Boutiques. Now give me a boutique any day. You really like shopping, huh? Mm-hmm. I really do. I consider it an event in my life. I like events. This will be an event, Sydney. So was the Spanish Inquisition. I didn't force you to come along. That is true. That is really true. You know, since I've met you, I have done the strangest things. I think you're just being friendly, considerate, a good sport. You have to admit, this isn't too shoddy. I'm full of surprises. They're in my jeans. Oh. Take it easy. It's not worth it. That's easy for you to say. I'll get us a paddle. We don't bid, Marvin. 
There could be a bargain or two. We're not interested in bargains, only that our man buys the brooch. Hello. Hello. I'll sign us both in. Oh, thanks. Your paddles. Ping pong. And your catalogs. <laughs> Sydney. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, look at this great flapper's hat from the 20s. What would you wear it with? Maybe nothing at all. I want that brooch. Oh, it looks expensive. I mean, expensive for you, considering your frugality. Yeah, that's a lot classier word than I had in mind. <laughs> that brooch should sell for no more than $80. Be my guest? Uh, well, yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I've already had my limit. Thank you. It's a very interesting collection of brooches, isn't it? I should know. I'm uh, something of a professional. A professional? Mm -hmm. Antiquity? Oh, yes. From Bangkok to Jerusalem to San Francisco. Wherever the old prizes are, there I am. I love old things. What's your specialty? Artifacts and inscriptions. Oh, what period? Etruscan's always been my favorite. Ah, uh -huh. well, you name it. From the Jurassic to the Victorian. You know, isn't it a shame in a crowd like this that they don't hand out name tags? I mean, because when you run into someone, what you're bound oh, to do... excuse me, you're absolutely right. I'm Hermansky. First name, too embarrassing to even mention. <laughs> Classified info. <laughs> uh, we're ready to begin, ladies and gentlemen. Would you kindly take your seats, please? Always drives me crazy. What does, Marvin? That whenever we're involved, someone will outbid us. A recurring nightmare. But that's impossible. Relax. We'll take a seat. This is the one I like, right there. Well, then, let's hurry and get a seat. I want to take a shot at that flapper's hat. I have a bit of 210 on this authentic and restored hat from the 20s. Restore once, one piece of old fabric inside, and I call once, it a hat from the 20s. 20 twice, 2, 230, uh, 240. 240 once. I love it. Isn't that a good enough twice, reason? 43 times. Sold to paddle number 44. Next, we have uh, lot number 75, a Victorian brooch, circa 1875, amethyst on white gold. Do I have an opening bid of $50? You shouldn't make the first bid. Why? Well, there might be a shill in the house. A shill? Yeah, that's somebody who works for the house. A well, shill or no shill. 80 is my absolute top price. $50 dollars twice. I have $60. $60 once. I wouldn't chase it. Dollars here. Twice. I have... Uh, 70. 150. 150 They're once. really overpaying for it. Well, if there's nothing else you want to bid on, why don't we go? Once. All right. Twice. 325. Fire, oh, hey, uh, listen, I've got to hang out here, but uh, maybe you can give me a telephone number. We could have a drink or something. 350 once, I oh, see gosh, four. I'm always losing my cards. Uh. 400, ladies and gentlemen, four, 450. 450 once, 450 twice, ladies and gentlemen. 470. Uh, $50 increments from now on, gentlemen. 1,000. 1,500. 10,000. We have 10,000 once. Uh, uh, 10,000 three times. Sold to panel number 38. Uh, next, we have lot number 76, a pair of magnificent silver candelabra. Maybe he's the last of the romantics trying to buy it for me. If you believe that, you'll believe I'm a natural blonde. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, lot 129. Lovely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And uh, uh, oval porcelain portrait. Then a chair, one of the blue boy, and one of Marie Antoinette, the king queen, from the uh, state of Baron de Savigny. You could buy that hat on Market Street for $50. No, not this hat. I have this hat right here. The same hat. $50.
Taxi! Well, at least I got a hat. We don't need a hat. What we need is a client. Do you two know what clients are? You know, we have a lot of bills around here, especially you, Sid. Can you believe $240 for a hat? She's got to be out of her mind. Don't you believe in doorbells? I pushed it. Oh, it's on the blink. I was going to get around to fixing that. I didn't know you were detectives. We didn't know you were interested in the brooch. Sorry about that. I'll level with you. I was trying to steer you off of it. <laughs> well, after it got past $80, I didn't need any steering. Well, it's part of a set. Sean Fitzgerald. He was a brooch maker in Leeds, England, 1873. It's a collector's item. I have a client. That's a swell story. Well, it's not that swell, actually. I've been in this forever, but uh, a little while back, I took a couple of shortcuts and I sort of got drummed out of the core. Yeah, and in making those shortcuts, you ran over a few people. And tarnished my reputation a bit. But this is a chance to regain some of the old respect. Redemption is an admirable trait. Yeah, admirable. Well, now that I know that you two girls are detectives and I don't know my way around the city that well, you could help. Oh, that won't be any problem. Carol. Excuse me. I don't think we should get mixed up with this guy. Why? His eyes. I have lost big bucks in liar's poker to guys with eyes like his. We need clients. Two out of three. That's democracy. My client has authorized me to go hire. Oh. So I got to find the guy that bought the brooch. That's easy. Auction houses always keep a list of their buyers. Huh. When I looked at you, I knew I was in for some good karma. That's not a client. That is a date. That is both. Good karma, please. Can you believe she fell for a line like that? Well, you know, Carol, she's always been a romantic. So was Juliet, and look what it got her. Joshua Llewellyn III, 160 Highfield Street. You know, Duke pulled a scam like this, using Candlestick Park as his address. Duke is her father. You want to tell us more about this brooch? What's to tell? It's just an ordinary brooch, not worth more than $80 on its own. That's what I thought it was worth. You have a good eye. Two, as a matter of fact. Both very beautiful. It comes from her jeans. Can we keep our minds on business? Weird business, like why would somebody pay 10 Gs for that thing? That's what I can't figure out. It's only worth that kind of money to a museum in London, Royal Hastings. They have the rest of the Fitzgerald set. How much will they pay for it? I'm uh, not permitted to give out that information. Can you give us a hint? Enough to hire two detectives? Absolutely. Come on, I'll buy the drinks. A hundred and fifty. You said fifty. We're talking big-time technology here. One slip, and I spent 20 years in jail. There he is. Oh, terrific. Let's talk to him. No, wait a minute. What's the matter, Hermansky? Why don't you just walk in there and make the man an offer? Look, it can't be that legit. He's buying under a phony ID. I've got to think this thing through here. Now, what's wrong with that? Something's valuable, buyers conceal themselves. 
I don't see you running around advertising here from the Royal Hastings Museum. True. Very true. Is that Hermansky? It's hard to tell. I'm also allergic to the smog, and I'd rather deal with my problems, thank you very much. And my problem is that I can't stop looking down. You're a masochist. Come on. another mess you've gotten me into me yes you with your bedroom eyes for that hermansky character he's not even your preppy type he is my type i almost majored in archaeology almost yeah the prospect of two-year digs and the broiling sun i didn't have that kind of dedication keep talking it helps the brooch buyer. Is he dead? Yeah. Yeah. And Hermansky is gone. Let's go talk to the cops. No, we can't. We have our client to think of. Hermansky? Carol, that man back there was shot. He is seriously dead. Are you implying Hermansky had something to do with it? wanted 150,000. You had to kill him. Where's the brooch? He didn't have it. What? I shot him from across the parking lot. By the time I got to his pockets, it was gone. Also the blonde, the one who bought the hat. They're partners, and they have a client. Who? Oh. The other heavy bidder at the auction, names uh, Romansky. Buys and sells artifacts, something of a flake. Stay with him, Marvin. What 
are you doing? I'm going to talk to Hermansky. You don't even know where he's staying. I'll find him. I'm a detective, remember? Well, so am I. And we're supposed to help the good guys and catch the bad guys, remember? So on this one, I'll just bow out. Be careful. I'll follow the brunette. You stay here. See what you can find out. Where do you want to go, lady? I really just want to ask you a question. Did you have any of your cabs make a pickup at 160 Highfield today? Hey, City's cab. Right. Be there in 20 minutes. 160 Highfield. Now, we got a lot of pickups there, lady. Well, this one would be around uh, 1240 or so. Are you a cop? No, but I am a private detective. <laughs> private is private, lady. Look, all you're going to get here is a ride. Well, I'll at least leave you my card in case you change your mind. I have to find it. Oh, sorry. Here, please do call. Thank you. Caulfield Detective Agency. Your partner could be in trouble. Who is this? Doesn't matter. Just meet me at Pier 7 on the Embarcadero in 10 minutes. Well, how do I know that you... Why did you disappear? Someone started shooting. Are you all right? Nice of you to ask. Hope you're not mad at me. Should I be? Well, steering you away from that brooch, and then a man gets killed, you might start to wonder. 
Yes, I might. Can I offer you a drink? That would be lovely. A glass of water? It has been a very trying day, Hermansky. Yes, ma'am. This is a very nice place. Oh, this? Yeah. A friend of mine loaned it to me while I'm in town. You sure you don't want something stronger than water? I'm sure. I didn't kill him. I swear it to you. I'm not that desperate, and I never will be. You just took this from a dead man's pocket? Hermansky, how could you? You're disappointed in me. I don't know what to believe about you now. I didn't lie to you about the brooch, you know. It is the Sean Fitzgerald the museum's looking for. Well, how can you be so sure that this is the right one? On the back, faded, there's the letters SF and the number six. With a drop of a chemical solution, you can see it. Why am I beginning to believe you again? <laughs> because you had the dream yourself. What dream? Huh. Anyone who's ever been interested in artifacts has had the dream. You know, the dream of finding the Dead Sea Scrolls or Cleopatra's tomb. Well, this is a far cry from the Dead Sea Scrolls. How much will the museum pay you for it? to $15,000. There's got to be something else about this brooch. Sorry to interrupt. Just stay calm now. I guess it's silly for me to ask why you're here. Yes, silly. I'm very happy now, and I want you to be happy too. My comeback road just got washed out. Well, don't give up, Hermansky. You hired us to find that brooch. Yeah, and I found it. Now it's gone. Well, we are still for hire. I don't think I do. All of this junk fits into that tiny little closet? Well, in a manner of speaking. Picked an odd time to rearrange it. I'm not. Somebody broke in. What? They broke in here. Someone's way of telling you to prune your past a bit. I like my past. I can tell. Well, I just can't seem to throw anything away. What a burden. I don't see it that way. Here in a thousand images is the story of my life. Well, if you just learned to throw your past away... Oh, so now it's my fault that somebody broke in here and violated my privacy. I didn't mean to imply that... I bet Hermansky had something to do with it. Uh-huh. I found him. And the brooch. I knew it. I knew it. He shot that guy in the parking lot and copped the brooch. You're only half right. He didn't shoot that man. The killer went to Hermansky's place while I was there, took the brooch at gunpoint, so Hermansky's innocent. Well, of murder, maybe, but he, st he stole the brooch. And then it was stolen from him. Makes it even, sort of. Now it's all too confusing. Let's call the cops. We can't do that. We have a client to think of. I do think that we should talk to someone. Janine. Oh, there are a thousand stories like that. It all boils down to the fact... Somebody wants the brooch. It's got to be what's in the brooch. No, it doesn't. Well, Janine, it's not very valuable. Well, it is to someone. Hermansky's client, if you believe Hermansky. She doesn't know Hermansky. Oh, yes, I do. 
He was in here to verify that you two had taken over Ray's agency. Sneaky, isn't he? What did I tell you? Now, I thought he was a very nice man. I think you should give him the benefit of the doubt. Benefit of the doubt? This guy steals from dead people. He was desperate. Have you checked on all the bidders at the auction? Of course. You two are really getting good. Wait a minute. Everyone except that auctioneer. He said, I hear 10,000 once. Then he said, I hear 10,000 three times. You mean he skipped over I hear 10,000 twice? Yeah. He cut Hermansky off so he couldn't buy the brooch. Agatha pulled that one once. No, maybe not. Maybe it was Conan Doyle. Another auction, yuck. Maybe you could find something to go with your hat. Excuse me. Uh, we'll be starting in a few minutes. No, no, it's another matter. I'm just looking for my ID. We're with the Caulfield Detective Agency. Detectives? I'm sorry, I haven't time. I'm sure you do. You see, we represent Mr. Hermansky. He was in earlier today bidding on a brooch. <laughs> I sell a lot of brooches. Now, if you'll excuse me. Now, look, Buster. You're not playing by the rules. You stopped him from making his bid. Do you remember now, or should we call the cops? Madam, I don't know what you're talking about. We think you do. And the man you made sure had the winning bid? He was murdered today. I had nothing to do with that. Well, we're glad to hear that. But why did you stop the bidding? Auctioneers have licenses. You could get yours revoked. I'll call the cops. Don't oh, wait a minute. We do it all the time in this business. Certain customers you take care of. And the man who bought the brooch? Peter Sanford. Who is he buying it for? I wouldn't know that. Do you have to dial nine to get an outside line? It's a local call. Who are you calling? The police, of course. Oh, I guess you'll have to use your own dime for mm. that. OK. Sanford sometimes fronts for the trader. The trader? Well, that's a lot of help. We need a name. Andrew Hogg. That's it. That's all I know. Well, at least we know who we're looking for. One man. It's a big city. I'll check around. I'll talk to my father's friends. Don't you have to be armed when you meet those people? Cute. They're just colorful. How can you tell? They only come out at night. Well, while you're combing the underbelly of this fair city, I'll take the high road, check the hotels, starting with the better ones, of course. Of course. chip is worth these days. They're not here. No chips. Get me Hong Kong. I put it where we agreed to put it. The crows. The crows. Not the crows. The crows had. The brooch, you idiot. What do you mean, hat? Not the brooch. No, no, not the brooch. The coach hat. The crow's hat. Hang up. But... Hang up. I know where it is. Brooch. Brooch. Hat. It's not the brooch. It's that flapper's hat from the 20s. It's called a cloach hat. Brooch, cloach, cloach, brooch. Hong Kong genius needs a Berlitz course. And the blonde detective bought it. about a client or a date? A client? Both. Maybe. 
You want to let me know when you work it out? You know how much that brooch means to Hermansky, Sidney. He's had a few wrong turns in his career. Come on. He's trying to change. I'd like to help. Come on. Blonde detective? She's here in the hotel, wearing the hats. Where in the hotel is she? She just checked in with her partner in the room next to us. I would have settled for just lifting the hat. But now they know something about us. It's still our advantage, Marvin. I don't think they know what's in the hat. Do you see her? Hey, hold on, pal. I am a client, you know. Can I have a little courtesy, please? Courtesy comes with after we see some money, you know? Fees, Pinienzi, up front at De Niro's. What can I do for you, Mr. Hermansky? <laughs> Where is she? Actually, out solving your problems. They got a location on the guy with the brooch. Oh. oh. I feel like I'm on an airplane. I didn't think you flew. I don't. It's just at this height, even the butterflies in my stomach have butterflies. Well, what am I supposed to do? He's right next door. You want me? to walk out on that veranda and purr at him when he walks out on his veranda? Something like that. No. I'd be too dizzy to seduce anyone you seduce him. I can't. He's seen me around Hermansky. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have to do oh, it. Your client, your brooch, your seduction. Uh, I really mean it. Sydney, what alternative do we have? The cops. We tell them everything and let the taxpayers take it from there. But we have a client. No, know. you have a... He is a date. He is definitely a date. Think of him as a date, Carol. trying to kill me. Shh, be quiet, they'll hear you. Of course they will. I'll be screaming all the way down. I can't get over it. All this time I was right there in the blonde's hat. Carol, I want to die with my hat on. Computer chip. That's what they've been after. What could possibly be on this tiny little chip to make someone kill for it? I'm sure it'll come to me if you let me back inside. They're knocking on our door. Well, no one will answer. They just figured that out. They're picking the lock. They're going in. Come on. You've heard of people being petrified? Well, this is it. We can't stay here forever. Just hang a plaque on me so the tourists will know who I was. Sydney, watch out! I saw them go up in the elevator. Follow the hat, Marvin. Right.
We're not going for a ride, are we? They're taking Sydney. Oh, my keys. I can't find my keys. They're in there. It's locked. Just had a coat hanger. It's open. You drive. Sorry you're involved. It was all a mistake. I just bought a hat. Yes. And your partner? Well, she just tried to buy a cheap brooch. See? It was all a coincidence. That's all there is to it. The Polish guy? Oh, he's small potatoes, Mr. Hogg. He was after the brooch, too. So, you're Ray Caulfield's ex, huh? Yeah, I'm proud of it. He was your kind of guy. Go over there. Officer, officer, you've got to help us. They've got my partner and the hat. It's very valuable. Please follow us. I'll follow you anywhere, lady. Brooch, and you keep your whatever. Do you have any idea what this is worth? Don't tell me. Millions. The very latest in Japanese technology. I really don't care. I'm not interested. I don't want to hear about it. You know, I could get out right here. Why don't you stop? I don't mind walking. I really don't. I could do that. But somebody's been killed, unfortunately, by us. I think I'll just get out now. You know, you don't even have to stop. You could just slow down and I'll pop out. You think we can trust her, Marvin? No, I don't. Okay, I got a caller at the corner of Gavin and uh, Camino Del Mar. Yeah, send me some help. Come on, over here, over here. If the evidence is in the hat, I gotta take the hat. Well, the hat belongs to me. I bought it. It'll be returned to you. Sure, in about a year. Back up. They wouldn't give you back your hat, huh? Um, what about the Fitzgerald brooch? Oh, well, we had better luck there. Oh, how did you manage that? 
Oh, it has something to do with her upbringing and the fee that we're going to charge you. Paid, paid, and paid. <laughs> Well? Oh, boy. You know, it's a good thing those guys ransacked my closet or I would have forgotten all about this dress. What are you doing? Having a glass of wine and making a belt. You're actually going to put all those beads onto that belt? You should try it sometime. Cut down on your expenses. How about a glass of wine? Well, you're acting kind of strangely. I mean, wine in the middle of the day and all those little beads. It's lunchtime. People have been known to have a drink with lunch. Lunch? Lunch? I don't see your lunch. Where is your lunch? Uh, Carol's skipping lunch today. <laughs> oh, well, um, you know, maybe I might have that glass of wine after all. Okay, you got me. What's the matter with you? He lied to me, Sydney. A lot of guys will do that. But don't you see? The romance was really over before it began. You know, this is the best bottle of wine we've had here in months. Thanks to our client. At least his check didn't bounce. You see, he might be a liar, but he does have his redeeming qualities. You're so supportive. He's a teenager. Well, what's the matter with teenagers? A dreamer, then. I like dreamers. They invent everything. Did you know my grandfather invented the toothpick? Immature, unrealistic, all the stuff you nail me for. All preppies are really teenagers at heart, Sydney. So if Hermansky's a teenager, well, don't you see? It was predictable. Aha. Uh -huh. Logical, but wacko. We will be drinking our lunch and making a belt. You know, I'll bet it was your wacko side that our ex went for. <laughs> 